All right, in this exercise, we're being asked to convert a point, negative three, root three, comma two, from rectangular form into spherical form. And just because space is limited, I'm gonna abbreviate rectangular form as RF and spherical form as SF. So if this is rectangular form, that means negative three is X, root three is Y, and the two is Z. And if you've been watching our, our previous videos, you kind of have the idea of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to convert this into a rho theta phi using these conversions that we derived in, in an earlier video. So let, let's get right to it. So um, we'll start with uh, converting, you know, I guess we'll just do the row first. It doesn't really matter what order you do these in. So let, let's see if we can find some way of taking an X, a Y, and a Z and getting a row out of that somehow. So you look through your list and I think it's pretty clear number four is probably going to be the guy we want because this relates X, Y, Z, and row together. So let's do that one. So we'll have negative three squared plus root three squared plus two squared equals rho squared. That's x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals rho squared. Uh, do a little algebra. Negative three squared is nine. Root three squared is three. Two squared is four, which equals rho squared. Nine, three, and four make 16. So rho squared equals 16, which means rho is four. All right, so we've got that one. Now you might say, well, Devin, why didn't you do plus or minus four? Or if you remember in your formal definition of spherical form, the rho is non-negative. So you wouldn't have a negative four for your rho. So we're only gonna take the, the positive four. All right, since space is limited, I think what I'll do is I'll just squeeze this guy up here in the corner and then erase this stuff just so I have more space to work again. All right, while I'm erasing, let's, let's keep thinking. Um, I guess we'll do theta next. All right, look through those conversions one through six and see if you find something that will convert an X, Y, and Z into a theta. Uh, looking through our list here, I think probably the best choice would be number five because we have a theta, y, and x. We have y and x and we can use that to find the theta, I think. So let, let's do that one. So we've got tan theta equals y over x. For us, that would be root three over negative three. Um, now, a little side note here, I, I suppose what you could do from this point is to grab your calculator, do an arc tan of this weird value. The, the only reason I would be hesitant to do that is that's just going to give you a decimal value. And I can tell you from experience, a good bit of these exercises, they'll construct the exercises to where your theta or your phi will turn out to be a nice unit circle angle like pi over three, seven pi over six, five pi over four, you know, angles like that. So I, I, I won't, I can't promise you it'll be one of those nice angles, but a good bit of the time it will be. So what does that mean for us? That means it's, it's worth a minute or two of our time to chase that rabbit, to see if we can write this guy in a nice way so that it fits one of our unit circle angles. So we've got root three over three. That, that doesn't look like anything on the unit circle. Um, I do know that tangent is sine over cosine, so I'll probably want to do something where the top looks like a unit circle value, like a half or root two over two or something like that, and the denominator as well, so I can get sine of something over cosine uh, of something to give us that numerator and denominator. Um, I think what I can do is since both of these are root three, I can, I can shuffle some things around you might already know that this is one over root three, but if, in case you didn't, let me show you how, how you could figure that out. Um, a lot of times when you see radicals, you can multiply by that same radical again and it'll shake things up and make it look a little different, sometimes for the better. Root three times root three is three over negative three root three, and then the threes cancel and you'll get one over negative root three. Believe it or not, that's actually better because now I can use a little trick. I don't, I don't think I would have just dreamed this up and, and discovered this myself, but I've seen it a lot of times and hopefully you have too. 
Um, knowing that the tangent is sine of some angle over the cosine of some angle, um, what you can do is if you have a one and a root three, these almost look like unit circle values. If you divide numerator and denominator both by two, which is obviously allowed, you get a half and root three over two, which is perfect. Those are unit circle uh, values that, that, that are very common. All right, now, one small issue we have to think about, though, is this negative could actually go in the numerator or denominator, uh, e either, you know, either one, uh, and, and it would be fine. Let's make sure we've got it in the right location to correspond to our x and y, uh, because one would put it in, uh, like in our case, the second quadrant, because the x is negative but y is positive, but if you moved it and made you know the numerator negative and the denominator positive that'd be the fourth quadrant so we just have to make sure we've got it you know our negative set in the right place so negative x and positive y negative x positive y that would be in the second quadrant so we would want the same thing we would want sine to be positive and cosine to be negative just to make sure everything work, works out okay all right so think about your unit circle what angle has a sine of one half, a y value of one half, and an x coordinate of negative root three over two, because that's the cosine. So negative root three over two is x, one half is your y. I think that's right here. Do you know what angle that is? Hopefully you said, if this is tan theta, hopefully you said that theta was five pi over six, that's the single. Sine of five pi over six is a half, and cosine of five pi over six is negative root three over two. So that would make sine over cosine what it's supposed to be. Let me jot that down. Theta equals five pi over six. So we've got rho, we got theta, all that's left is to find phi. So for that, let me erase this. All right, while I'm erasing again, go ahead and look at our conversions there. Do you see anything that might help us find a phi? And there's more than one right answer. Uh, in a roundabout way, I think number one could. Uh, so could number two. So could number three. Um, really any of those, uh, number six could. Uh, anything that has a phi I think would work because we've already found everything else. We've got x, y, z, uh, rho, and theta. So anything that has a phi is fair game. Um, pr most people would probably just go with number six because it's pretty, you know, pretty immediate. Uh, I'm actually gonna go, I, I think, with number three. Number three and number six are basically the same thing. Notice to solve for phi, what you would do is you would divide z by rho, which is actually this guy down here, and then take the arc cosine of it. So, so really three and six are basically the same. Three is a little shorter though. So we'll have uh, z equals rho times the cosine of phi. And before I go any farther, just remember phi can only be zero to 180. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so two over four would be cosine of phi, uh, phi, not theta. F so phi is the arc cosine of a half, or, or you could say cosine of phi is a half. So think about your unit circle. Where on the unit circle is cosine equal to a half? Uh, cosine's a half in the first and fourth quadrants at pi over three and five pi over three, but both of those are not eligible. Uh, phi, remember, it has to be zero to 180 or zero to pi in radians. So I think the only one possible would be pi over three, and that's it. So phi would be pi over three. 5 pi over 3 is way past 180. That's almost 360 degrees. So I think pi over 3 would be the only, the only one. All right, and we're done. So we, we've done it. We've used these conversions to convert a point in rectangular form into spherical form. So 
spherical form, the point would be expressed as 4, comma, 5 pi over 6, comma, pi over 3. And this point in spherical form represents the same location in space as negative 3 root 3 2 does in rectangular form.